I recently talked to you about how you don't need to justify yourself to anyone and what that means and why we do it and how to stop ourselves from doing it and get out of that habit. And I had several of you reach out to me and ask for more specific examples on the types of things that we don't need to justify to people. And so I've made a list and I'm going to share with you kind of these top seven things that many of us get stuck in justifying without even maybe realizing it and how doing this and trying to justify these things to others can undermine our own autonomy, can undermine our own sense of self, can undermine our ability to feel clear and confident and comfortable in who we are. It can really undermine our self-confidence. And many of them are habits, many of them, like I said, we're doing without realizing it. And so I want to bring your attention to them today so that you can become aware of them. And awareness is the first step towards making healthy shifts in the direction we want to be going. And so as you become aware of them, you can start working on breaking these habits and being more mindful of not justifying these things to others because it's not necessary. And in many cases, it's not good for us and it's not helpful or beneficial to the relationship, whatever kind of relationship that is. So stay tuned. I know you're going to get a lot out of these ones. If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second and introduce yourself in the comment section below if you are back again. Always so good to have you here. Thanks for joining me again. Special shout out to my shifters who are here and watching. I know many of you are in the shift society. And so, yeah, it's always good to have you here on this platform as well, in addition to our membership community. If you want to get more information about the Shift Society, the information about that is in the description below. That is the place where we are taking the work that we're doing here. We're taking it to a deeper level. You're being supported. You're having accountability. You're learning the step-by-step -step process to learn how to manage your mind and emotions, no matter whoever or whatever is happening around you. So you can get more information about that there. Either way, my name is Julia Christina, and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, and I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And justifying ourselves, like I said, this can be one of those ones that can really hold us back, and in many cases, a habit that we have kind of maybe taken on somewhere, we have learned to do it, or maybe it's because we struggle with low self-esteem. We struggle with not feeling comfortable and or as comfortable and confident in ourselves as we'd like to. And so we're wanting people to see things our way or to agree with us, even when it's not necessary. And it's maybe even not appropriate that they, they don't have to. And so we can find ourselves trying to earn our sense of self-worth through making sure that everyone agrees with us, everyone sees things our way, everyone is okay with what we're doing, everyone supports all the decisions that we're making and think we're making the best choices and we're doing things right all the time, which is completely subjective anyways. But we are outsourcing our sense of self to others by seeking their approval. And that's what justification is when we're constantly just trying to justify ourselves. It's because we are approval seeking because we hope that if everyone else approves of us, then maybe we will be able to approve of ourselves as well. And so that's why I say we are outsourcing our sense of self. So instead of getting clear in who we are and what we are and why we are and what we want and what we're doing with our lives, instead of getting clear with our own reasons for our own de decisions and liking those reasons for our own decisions, we're looking to other people to like those reasons instead of really focusing on the main opinion that counts the most when it comes to living our own lives is our own. And so let's get into these and talk about things that we do not need to be justifying to others. And I just touched on this a minute ago, but the first one and maybe the biggest one is you don't need to justify what's important to you. You don't need to justify your taste in music, your taste in food, your preference for feng shui, de decorative style in your home, whatever that is. Your minimalist decor, your maximalist decor, your 
choices of where you want to go on vacation, what you want to do with your time. You don't need to justify the things that are important to you, especially if those things are having no impact on anyone else. Your food choices don't pick, p- uh, impact anyone else. Your decor choices don't impact anyone else. Where you like to go on vacation doesn't impact anyone else. The hobbies like that you like to do. You might be into macrame. You might be into magazine collection. It doesn't matter. Those things are important to you. And if they are only impacting you, then they do not need to be justified to anyone else. And, you know, I remember a few years ago, one of my friends was dating this guy who had this very sophisticated taste in music. And he was really into kind of like alternative, kind of like niche, really just like artistic, kind of well-renowned, uh, well-known, well-renowned, well-known music and sort of this kind of niche, kind of cool um, circle. And she was into pop music. And I remember on one of the first dates, you know, he was talking about different music and he was sort of like trying to help her understand a little bit more of the nuances behind the whole like music community and all this kind of stuff and all these kind of cool types of music and cool artists and kind of unknown, but really great, like relatively unknown in the mainstream kind of stuff. And she was like, I like Taylor Swift and I'm kind of into Justin Bieber. (laughs) And she was like, you know what, I don't have to justify this. I don't have to say why I like sort of like pop music and why, you know, that's maybe in your eyes not as cool as the kind of music you're into. I don't need to justify it. This is the kind of music I like. This is the kind of music I'm into. It has no impact on you. And I'm going to own that. And I'm not going to justify it. And I don't need to give a reason. I'm just going to own that because that's who I am. And that's what I like. And that's what's important to me. So really just looking at, are you justifying things that are important to you that really don't need to be justified? The second one that you don't need to justify is being unapologetically yourself. Alfred Adler, one of the forefathers of modern psychology and a contemporary of Freud and Jung and Rogers, the people who, who in a lot of ways have created modern psychology as we know it, Adler says the most important kind of courage that we can get is the courage to be our imperfect selves. The perfect or the the courage to be ourselves. That is some of the hardest but most important kind of courage that we can get. And if we look at many of the things that we struggle with, many of our neuroses and our, even a lot of times our mental health struggles come from this deep kind of core belief or shame that somehow something about me on the inside or the outside or whatever from the past, from things that have happened, things we've done, whatever that is, something about me is unfit to be human. Something about me is inferior or not good enough. I need to be or become something or someone else before I can accept who I am, before I can be who I am. Where Freud says that is the exact opposite that is true. Being ourselves is the antidote to shame. Being ourselves is the antidote to self-loathing. Being unapologetically who we are is the most important kind of courage that we can get. And I'm not saying that it's always easy. And especially if you're dealing with a lot of shame, especially if you are, you know, have been um, mistreated or psychologically or mentally or physically abused. And there's a lot of stuff in there that you really can't fathom how you could be worthy of love and belonging. You couldn't fathom how you could be accepted for exactly who you are right now. I'm not saying that this is easy. And this is why we do this deeper work in the shift society to deal with those beliefs, deal with those kind of core beliefs, those core almost identity pieces that we've adapted and adopted that aren't actually who we are, that we've learned, but we learn how to undo those and redo more healthy and helpful and healing uh, messages and, and thoughts and beliefs and perspectives about ourselves and so that we can be living more fully and freely as ourselves. Unapologetically, you do not need to justify who you are, when you are being your true authentic self, when you are not hiding, when you are not pretending, when you are not performing, when you are not perfecting, that is who you are. And that is something you do not need to justify. The next thing that you don't need to justify 
and some of you are going to resonate with this more than others, is your career path. Now, for some of you, maybe you come from a family of origin where you have parents who had very specific expectations of the career you were allowed to choose, if it was a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist or whatever that was, or maybe you have a long line of farmers in your family or fire firefighters in your family or flight attendants in your family. You have this long lineup and that was the expectation that you follow the family tradition and then you didn't. And there's people who are disappointed or maybe even distraught about your choice. And you feel like you need to justify your decision to your family. You feel like if you're an adult, <laughs> a grown up adult living on your own, forging your own path in life and still looking for your parents approval, not just looking, but needing it and feeling anxious at the thought of not having it, then we have some work to do. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to want our parents' approval. All of us, I mean, not all, but many of us want it, right? It's kind of ingrained into us from a young age. I remember when my daughter was like a toddler and she came out of her bedroom one day, she'd put on this like outfit with sparkles and skirts and rainbows and crowns and colors. And she entered or she exited the bedroom and came into the living room while I was sitting and she said, ta-da! And she was presenting herself looking for that approval. She had done something that she was proud of and she wanted me to be proud of her too. That is ingrained into who we are. We want our parents' approval, but at a certain age, we have to do our own work enough so, so that we do not require it. So that not getting our parents' approval or the threat of not getting it, it is not crippling us, is not holding us back from living our own individual lives. Of course, there's connection. For some of you, family is, you know, you're more ingrained, maybe a little more enmeshed with your family, and there is more kind of involvement in that way. But at the same time, it is still your life that you need to lead and doing the things that are important to you. So if you decide to become a circus performer instead of of a certified accountant, that that is your choice. And if that brings you joy, if that brings you fulfillment, if that allows you to live your life and pay your bills and, you know, go about your business, then that is up to you. Now, some of you might be falling into this category of, of um, justifying your career path just by people you meet at a party, at a social event, just someone that you, you know, start to become friends with and you say what you do and then you feel like you need to justify it, right? Where you're like, oh, like I am, I'm a, I, I'm a teacher, but you know, that's just because blah, 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 blah. Or I am a I don't know, I'm trying to think of another career path. I am a police officer, but that's just because blah, 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 blah. Or, you know, like I am a jewelry maker and that's just because blah, 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 blah. Or I am a judge <laughs> and that's just because blah, 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 blah. Like you somehow you have some reason why you need to justify it. Maybe you're trying to prove that your career path is good enough. Maybe you're trying to prove that just because you have sort of like a, you know, a higher prestigious career that you're still like this down to earth person and not, you know, full of yourself. Maybe you're trying to like justify it and make yourself look good. Maybe you're trying to make yourself, you know, look not as good, whatever that is. It doesn't matter what your reason is. You don't need to justify what you do to engage and involve with the world and contribute and earn an income and live your life. That is up to you to be doing what makes sense for you and the people directly impacted by that decision, but no one else. The next thing that you don't have to justify is your food or your health choices. You don't need to justify whether or not you like to eat salads, whether you like to eat seaweed, whether you like to eat, you know, syrup on your pancakes. <laughs> or, in my case, syrup on your sausage. If you haven't tried it, it is delicious. But you don't need to justify your food choices. You don't need to justify your health choices. You don't need to justify why you're choosing, you know, to eat 
less carbs or to eat more carbs or to eat, you know, more fruits and vegetables and less meat or more meat and whatever that is, you don't need to justify your food choices. Now, I find in my experience, you can correct me if you've had a different experience or you can just share if you guess not correct me. Um, You can share if you've had a different experience. But my experience is that people who choose to eat traditionally really kind of healthy, nutrient-dense diets get pushback, get criticized, get made fun of. And I, and we could go deeper into what this is about and how maybe those food choices can food choices can feel threatening to people who are not making those food choices. But what about we just let people make their own food choices and leave each other alone? And if someone chooses to eat quinoa and spinach and seaweed and salad and you know, whatever that is, if someone chooses to do that, then allowing them to do that, that there's no need to comment on it, to criticize it, to poke fun at it. And this came up because there was a woman in the shift society who was talking about how she lives in a community where she is a bit of the outlier for her really sort of like nutrient dense, you know, a little bit not as kind of mainstream food choices, mainstream for her region, where it tends to be more of like a meat and potatoes kind of community. And she chooses other foods. And she was finding that people were making fun of her. And when we talked about this in group, there was a lot of people who had said that they had been sort of made fun of, comments were made, passive aggressive remarks for their food choices within their family, with their friends, for whatever that is. If you're going out with a group of friends and someone chooses to have, you know, fish and steamed vegetables, and that's just their choice if everyone else is having burgers and fries, that everyone can just leave each other alone with their food choices. But it tends to be that the people who are in that group, maybe the outliers with their food food choices, with their, you know, what their dietary choices, that they are the outliers and they tend to be commented on. But it's really none of anyone else's business. And you don't need to justify what you are choosing to nourish your body with. And other people are allowed to not like it or to disapprove of it or to disagree with it. And they are allowed to, you still don't need to justify it because it has no impact on them. The next thing, and this one is especially for women. We do this a lot. Men, I'm sure there's some of you who do it as well. Uh, But from what I see, from what I know, from what I've read, from what I've heard, people who are socialized as women tend to justify their appearance a lot. When's the last time you justified having put on some weight. Oh, you know, I've gained some weight over COVID because it was so stressful or I didn't get out as much or, you know, things have been so crazy that I've put on some weight. Or you're like, oh, sorry that I'm looking a little bit tired, you know, like things have been crazy and I haven't been sleeping very well and so I've got these bags under my eyes. Or, you know, I'm sorry that I'm not totally put together but a really busy morning and I haven't had a chance to get myself together yet, right? Or I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to put on my makeup yet right? Like how many times have you justified it? Have you apologized for it? Have you made excuses for your appearance in some way? Instead of understanding that that does not need to be justified. You as a woman, as a man, as a human, you do not owe the world your beauty. You do not owe the world beauty, being put together, being a certain size, being a certain color, being a certain composition, being a certain state of of appearance. You do not owe that to anyone. You don't need to justify your different looks. Some looks are made up. Some looks are not made up, right? Like, I mean, makeup, like putting on makeup and doing your hair, that's one of your looks. Rolling out of bed and throwing your hair in a scrunchie and giving your face a rinse, that's another one of your looks. These are all just looks that we have as humans and you don't need to justify it. You're allowed to show up in existence however you want to, unless there's a dress code where I know, you remember those signs in like convenience stores? Maybe this was just in my region, but I remember there was those signs at like 7-Elevens where it said, no shoes, no shirts, no service. (laughs) Apparently, there was a lot of people walking in barefoot and topless. So if that is the case, you may need to put on a shirt and some shoes if you want to go and get a Slurpee. But other than that, when there is not a requirement, 
You don't need to justify and you don't owe anyone your beauty. The next thing that you do not need to justify is the goals and the dreams that you're pursuing. Your goals and your dreams are up to you. You don't have to make excuses. If your dream is to become a, you know, a, a, a replica of Julia Child with your culinary abilities, if your dream is to become a, an embroiderer, if your dream is to become a shoe shiner, if your dream is to run a company, if your dream is to be a stay-at-home parent, if your dream is to care for your aging parents, if your dream is to travel the world, you don't need to justify your goals and your dreams. You don't need to justify if you want to make a million dollars. You don't need to justify if you're happy living paycheck to paycheck and just making ends meet and, and working to live, to just have, you know, a comfortable life. You don't need to justify that. You don't need to justify not wanting a bunch of money. You don't need to justify wanting a bunch of money. You don't need to justify your goals and your dreams. All you have to do is like them and like your reasons for them. That is all that you need to do. It is nobody else's business. And if people are interested, that's fine. If they disapprove of it, that's fine. If they approve of it, that's great. If they don't like it, that's fine. If they think it's ridiculous, that's fine. They don't have to. The persons who, the persons, the main person's opinion who counts when it comes to what is important to you and what you are doing with your life and the goals and dreams that you are pursuing, the main person's opinion who counts the most is your own. So make sure you are clear on that and then go for it. Do it, live it, fulfill it, create it. Cultivate it, experience it, experiment with it. It's your life. The next thing that you don't need to justify your, to anyone is why you're putting yourself first. There are absolutely times where we put others first, where we consider others' needs, where we are, you know, taking a step back and boosting somebody else up, being there for someone, supporting someone who needs us. There are absolutely times for that. And there are also times when we are there for ourselves, when we are boosting ourselves up, when we are taking care of ourselves, when we are taking a step back, when we are taking for ourselves what we need and putting our own energy, our own um, mental well-being our own physical well-being first. And you don't need to justify that. You are allowed to exist in a caring way for yourself in your own life. You are allowed to take care of yourself in your own life. There is nobody who is ever going to be as invested in your well-being as you because you are the one who is going to be most impacted by your own well-being. So that is yours to be taken care of. You don't need to justify it. That's really interesting. And by the time this video comes out, in about a week, we are having a guest speaker come into the Shift Society named Katrina Leggins, and she is a self-care expert who teaches on self-care, what it really means, how it's important for our self-worth and our self-esteem and how engaging in it properly changes our brain in obviously a positive way, why we struggle with it, why we feel guilty when we do it, societal messages around it, cultural norms that often prevent it. She's going to be coming in and teaching about that in the Shift Society. So Make sure you're on the wait list for the Shift Society so that when we open up, you can get in there and you can be a part of what's happening. We have master classes, we have guest speakers, we have core lessons, step-by-step -step process on how to manage your mind and emotions in the most effective way for most human beings. Science-backed, research-backed, everything is sound psychological teaching and you're being supported the whole time. There's a community there for you. It's kind of like your, your brain gym if you want to call it that, everything is there. It's the most sort of well-equipped, uh, well-serviced, elite brain gym, the Shift Society. Make sure you're on the wait list for that. That is in the description below so that you get notified immediately when we open up registration because you want to get in there. And then also, if feeling more comfortable and confident in who you are, not thinking that you need to justify yourself 
to people, the root of that is learning how to trust yourself more, how to feel more comfortable and confident in who you are. So you don't feel like you need that approval constantly from others. You don't need them to, you know, their approval of you so that you can hopefully approve of yourself, building that from the inside out with the simple steps to self-trust. It's my extremely affordable guide. It's in the description below. That is going to be some deep work that you're going to do there on those simple steps to self-trust, building that foundation of a strong, healthy relationship with yourself, the essential steps. You can do that. Get started on that while you're waiting for the Shift Society to open. Let me know what connected with you. Love to hear it. Tell me also, what what else on this list do you not need to justify that you find yourself doing? What's kind of jogged your brain through this talk? Would love to hear as well. Always good to have you here. Like the video if you got something out of it. That'd be super helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We can stay connected. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Take good care of those around you. Bye for now.